What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and there's more stuff we need to talk about with the new Pokemon Sword and Shield trailer. Perfect. Let's dive into it. I'm much more awake than I was in my video earlier today. So anytime that the Pokemon company puts out a brand new trailer, they also like to flood their website with a more in-depth detail on things. And there's a good chance that you won't go on their website and read these things. And that's why you're here on YouTube for listening to me read these things. So I'm going to read these things. We have one, two, three, four five six new articles to take a look at the six new articles that we're going to take a look at by far the most interesting one is poke jobs so in the japanese trailer we saw a little bit of this and honestly had no idea what it was but poke jobs in the gala region it's very common for people and pokemon to work together kind of like making machokes do work for you many corporations and universities request the help of pokemon through what are known as poke jobs you can check available poke jobs at the rotami in Pokemon centers, you'll also be able to send Pokemon from your boxes directly to any job you accept. Really quickly, Pokemon from your boxes directly, this is important because we are not continuing the in your backpack one solid box of every Pokemon that you've caught. We're going back to Ultra Sun and Moon boxes on a PC. Now, I don't know if the PC is going to be the Rotami. We don't know if it's going to be accessible from your phone anywhere. I doubt it would. I think it's going to be locked to Pokemon Centers. The Pokemon you send will help out with the job and the experience will even help them grow. There are many different Poke jobs available. You'll find that certain Pokemon types are suited for specific jobs too. Helping out for a long time or sending as many Pokemon as you can on a job also nets some good results. Results. You might even receive some rare items. So right here we have a screenshot of an English version of what we saw in the trailer, which is nice. So there is a few different companies here. The construction company is the Marco Cosmos Construction. We also have the cooking company. We have the grass, which is actually a farm. Something about a law. Maybe this is the police department. I can't make out what the green icon is, and that's something with a Wilmer, and it says we need some nets. Construction work heavy lifting. Pokemon wanted up to seven. Construction needs power. Duh. Power needs muscles. Please send Pokemon with big muscles. So you're gonna do Machop, Machoke, Machamp, uh, Throw, Sock, and Conkolder, and those are your Pokemon. Great. I guess maybe fighting types, or maybe bulkier Pokemon? It'd be interesting to see how good Snorlax does, because he's bulk, but not in the muscle way. Pokemon wanted up to seven. This goes to show that it's different from Pokepelago, that you're going to choose the Pokemon that you want for a specific amount of Pokemon. And then right here, you can see that it's a half day of work. I assume you could choose half day or full day. So even Pokemon that you catch, that you throw in the PC, that you're never ever going to use, they can actually do something useful, which is nice. There are many places requesting the help of Pokemon, including corporations and universities. You said that already. So here we see the box view of a full team of Pokemon, including the Pokemon that was just announced, a la Galarian Weezing. And then we see Pokemon in the PC box. Each Pokemon sent to a Pokejob will come back having grown from the experience. So it looks like when they go out on this job, want to help on our farm, they get experience points. They'll receive awards like experience points, thanks, or base points. I don't know what base points are. And how much they get will depend on factors like how long they work and their types. What are base points? Do you get your own like secret base like you did in Auras? Or is this talking about like their base stats, so their individual values may be boosted or their effort values? That's pretty interesting. This is Rotami, your new helper in Pokemon Centers with a ton of features. This is actually our first look at the inside of a Pokemon Center. It looks like an ATM. It looks like you're going there to withdraw money. Or Pokemon, that makes sense. You can accept jobs from Rotami you find in every Pokemon Center around the Galar region. Rotami will have many different features aside from the Poke jobs too. You can access your boxes or even have a go at the Lotto ID. Okay, so basically they're taking Poke Pelago and the PC and combining it all into one thing. 
And this shows us that, yes, you are going to have to go to a Pokemon Center to swap out your Pokemon. It's not going to be something that you just pull out of your bag at any given time and swap Pokemon like it was in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. That was a nice handy feature, although it did make things just way too easy. If your team is running low on HP, you just swap them out. But now, you know, like a traditional Pokemon game, you have to do things the right way. You can find Rotami in any Pokemon Center in the Galar region. Best of luck to you. Oh god, the Rotom puns. It has many features such as Lodo ID. I don't know what that is. It may be like a giveaway sort of thing. Now one thing that we don't see in the screenshots that we did see in the trailer is you might even get some rare items. In the Japanese trailer, I'm pretty sure these big excitement marks coming off of Diglett and Golurk here mean that they found items in addition to the experience that they got. The only other thing I'm thinking is both Diglett and Golurk are ground types. The, the coal rock boy, he's a rock type. So maybe ground type Pokemon got the boost because as we can see this had to do with the trail, the, the train tracks. So maybe ground type Pokemon are needed to lay down the train tracks or something. So the ground type Pokemon got a bonus on top of what everyone else got. Or they got items. I'm hoping items. Next in order of awesomeness, Galarian form Pokemon. Or Galarian. Nope, I'm sticking with Galarian. Galarian form Pokemon. Certain Pokemon have adapted to the unique environment of one specific region and look different than the same species might look when found in another region. Yes, that's what regional evolutions are. I want to I want to know the story behind Galarian Weezing. It emits purified air from the tops of its heads. The Galarian Weezing consumes polluted air and poisonous gases for sustenance. The air and gases absorbed will have toxins removed before being spewed out again from the top of Weezing's head. Apparently, the air produced through this purification process is very clean. <laughs> so this is, this is Pokemon's answer to the industrial area making a lot of pollution. These Weezings absorb all the pollution and then let out clean steam out of its head. Nice. My boy Dan, aka A Drive, let me know that there was a spelling error in my thumbnail. Thanks, Dan. Where do we leave off? Oh yeah, Weezing's face. The toxins accumulated within Weezing's body form into concentrated poison gas clouds that leak out and drift around. The gas is so potent that even a whiff is enough to stun and immobilize an opponent. It is Weezing's best weapon during battles. That's really scary, honestly. It absorbs poison and then it becomes poisonous. That makes a lot of sense, actually. While we're talking about regional evolutions, Obstagoon. Living in the unique environment of the Galar region, some regional forms have developed unique evolutions unseen in any other region. Obstagoon, which evolves from Galarian Lanoon, is one example. By the way, in the last video, I said Zigzagoon's Gen 2, a Pokemon that has not had a secondary evolution since it was introduced in second generation. It's Gen 3, obviously. I woke up way too early to record. I apologize. Fix that problem right away with some G Fuel. What's that, Austin? That's way too much water for a single G Fuel. You're right, we're doing sour cherry lemonade. Cause apparently mixing G Fuel things is a thing. Oh, that wasn't enough water. Great, now I'll be awake and responsive. Thanks, G Fuel. Use code ADRIVE for 30% off G Fuel or something. Great, Obstagoon's evolution was spurred on by a harsh environment. The Lunoon of the Galar region live in harsh conditions compared to those found in other regions. With fierce competition against others of its species, their survival instinct has been honed as a result, leading to their evolution into Obstagoon. So what you're saying is because this area is more industrialized, there's not enough free roaming healthy landscape for all these Pokemon to thrive naturally so they become more competitive and dark because they kill each other like foxes do or whatever Zigzagoons are. That makes sense. It uses Obstruct before counterattacking. Though Obstagoon is extremely combative, it seems that it doesn't often launch its first attack. It will taunt an opponent with its giant tongue, goading it into attacking. When it does, Obstagoon will cross its arms and meet the oncoming attack with its Obstruct move. So apparently it has a, uh, a signature move called Obstruct. Interesting. 
It's especially skilled at throwing its opponents off guard and counterattacking with its sharp claws. Cool. We also learned about more Pico, which is a bootleg Pikachu, one of many that we have, and this one gets hangry. It's electric dark, and every turn it switches between its full belly state and its hangry state. By the way, these are little tiny pockets that it keeps berry seeds in, which is adorable. It's always hungry no matter how much it eats, just like Snorlax and me. We've kind of already covered more Pico in detail in the last video. Is there anything else really important here? Uh, there's Bead, Team Yell, and Marnie. Let's quickly review them. Marnie wants to become a champion, and Team Yell thinks she's super cool, and they go so far as to take over hotel lobbies to prevent other challengers from assessing transportation, and even shout and distract opponents during battle. That seems pretty cool. Does that mean that during a battle with Marnie, Team Yell is going to be voice acted and distract you? Because that'd be pretty cool. Or are they just going to add, like, random chanting sounds. Bead is one of your rivals who's skilled at Pokemon battles and has the pride to match. He has joined the gym- wait wait, he? thought this was someone's grandmother. This is a boy? He has joined the gym challenge, having received his endorsement from Rose, the chairman of the Pokemon League, while he has once become champion, other objectives as well. Oh, so not only is grandma a boy, but a devious one. You can't look at that and say that's not a grandmother. No, that's a possibly teenage boy. Although it's wrong of me to assume their gender. Looks like the Queen of England a little bit. There's a meme of that, right? Great, and that mostly covers all of the stuff on the website. The rest of it is either boring, repetitive, or completely unnecessary. So we're gonna be wrapping this up. Guys, if you're excited for Pokemon Sword and Shield, which I am, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.